Hey everyone, Mitch coming in for the Commander's Core Studio. Welcome to the show. So today's episode comes to you courtesy of my incredible patrons. Once a month, they vote on a commander that they want to see in an upcoming deck deck, and the commander that gets the most votes wins. And the commander that got the most votes on this episode is Agatha of the Vile Cauldron, an incredibly powerful commander that is quite spicy. Let's jump into it. A 1-1 human warlock for just red in a green. Activate abilities of creatures you control cost X less to activate, where X is Agatha's power. This effect can't reduce the amount of mana than less than one mana. Pay four red and a green. Other creatures you control get plus plus one and gain trample and haste until end of turn. So this is a commander that, well, says, hey, those activated abilities that might be pretty expensive. Let's take those down all the way. I mean, not all the way. Again, you have to at least pay one mana for those activated abilities. But yeah, taking an ability that says it costs, um, I don't know, maybe even like this one six down to two is pretty crazy. And the amount of reduction you can get. And there's even some pretty broken things that you can do with this one. <laughs> yeah, this is a crazy good commander. You don't, I mean, until you actually build around this commander, you might not realize just how many creatures there are out there that have activated abilities and how crazy those abilities can get. So... This is quite the doozy, a very, very powerful commander, but one that actually can have a very, very reasonable budget. I mean, this commander itself is $1.24. The total estimated cost of this deck, according to Moxfield, is just $16.30, so incredibly budget-friendly. Now, keep in mind that doesn't include the cost of shipping or basic lands, so you might already have those basic lands, or maybe you can borrow them from a friend, or LGS, etc., 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 or just, yeah, buy them in bulk. Regardless, very budget-friendly and very, very powerful. With all that said, let's jump into the tactics. So to start things off, let's start with tactic number one, power play, because, well, we can utilize cards to increase our commander's power to ensure that we can reduce that activated ability cost of our creatures. So something very simple like Oganaganata is a really good one. Can only be attached to a creature with power three or greater, so you need to have something else to build up your commander first, which is okay. Very easy to do. Plus zero, zero, and trample equipped too. So again, our commander going from, well, let's say three power to six power is a massive jump. Obviously, Black Blitter Forge is crazy good with this commander. Plus one for each land you control. We are in green. We've got so many ways to land ramp. So yeah, this can just say, oh, hey, um, I'm just going to handle all the power adjustments that are needed for this commander to essentially reduce all of our activities down to nearly nothing. Hero's Blade, a basically a free attachment. Plus three, plus two. Whenever a ledger creature battle under control, you may attach it to it. So yeah, our commander just basically gets this for free most of the time. An extra plus three can be absolutely massive. Moving on, Crown of Gondor. Plus one for each creature you control. So again, we've got a good amount of creatures in this deck, a lot of creatures, and all of them can help support our commander, like our commander supports those creatures. On top of that, whenever a large creature is battlefield under your control, if there is no monarch, you become the monarch, and the equipped cost can just cost one if we are the monarch. So this one can provide us a lot of advantages throughout the game. Then there's Heirloom Blade. Plus three plus one, whenever the equipped creature dies, you may reveal cards to the top of your library to a big creature card that shares that creature type with it. With that card in your hand, the rest of our bottom of the library in a random order. Again, our commander is a warlock. Um, yeah, not too many warlocks, but a lot of humans, though. Our commander is also a human, so a lot of free creatures off the top of our library for our commander is dealt with. And again, just an equipped cost of one to get an extra three power that can be absolutely huge for our commander speaking of which tenza go to small who is plus plus one, one but if it's legendary it gets plus two plus two as well and i guess trample as well because it is red that being said just equip cost of one for a plus three plus three is absolutely massive bone horde can grow throughout the game as well living weapons so this one actually is a creature that comes into play essentially or attached to a zero zero creature plus x plus x or x the number of creature cards in all graveyards not just your own so again this one can be absolutely massive like a black blade reforged and speaking of massive uh raised by giants just immediately a great enchantment background commander creatures you own have base power numbers 10 10 are giants that are other creature types Again, this one just says, yeah, let's just say, hey, our commander is now, well, a two-shot KO on any player. And again, our commander can essentially, yeah, with many ways, get damage through, take players out. Uh, I guess it's not two-shot KO. It's very close to being a two-shot KO at 10, right? It goes 10, 20. <laughs> I was slightly off. Regardless, being able to reduce that activability cost by 10 is absurd. And of course, enough to reduce every single one of our activities to nearly nothing.
But we actually aren't done with pumping just yet, and in fact, there are certain creatures out there that can help with that, and certain activated abilities of creatures that can build on that as well, like Jor-El, Munvali Recluse. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, you make a 2-2 cat, so that's nice. On top of that, by paying four green green, or yeah, again, in most circumstances, just green green, because that reduction, until end of turn, creature you control a base power number is XX versus number of cards in your hand, so this can be a massive pump effect for us. Speaking of which, Elder of Laurels, my goodness, is this crazy. Three and a green, or again, usually just a green. Target creature gets plus X plus X, so after X number of creatures you control. For just a single mana, this can be like pump creature by 10 every single time. Yeah, this can be a crazy good way to take opponents out and also to pump our commander. Then there's Hound Tamer. Trample by paying three and a green, or again, typically just a green. Get a counter target creature, so that's some nice permanent pump right there. Flips over to a trampling, uh, other werewolves and wolves, which you do have some wolves in here as well, and werewolves. Trampling, and then also the exact same effect, so that can be absolutely huge. Overwind Oddity, speaking of a beast, absolutely crazy beast. Trample and haste for five green, green. We can transform it, again, typically just green, green, so a massive reduction for that. Flip it over into an 8-8 eight eight with trample and haste, which also gives other creatures we control plus almost one with trample and haste as well, so that is absolutely absolutely huge for us wild heart invoker though oh my goodness pay eight yeah it's only going to cost simply one mana most of the time again with this commander once we get things built up target creature gets plus five plus five against trample until i turn that can be absolutely massive again just paying one mana to do that can be crazy or how about creeper hulk a five five trample that has pay one and a green or typically again actually just with our commander in play at a base level just a green mana until i turn target creature control has base power and toughness five five and gain trample just utilizing this on our commander can be absolutely massive the first time and of course other creatures as well can really help them out too come all fist of crows though is a game ender four three human druid for one green mana, target lands comes a 1-1 one, one on turn, so I land. Pro tip on this one, uh, if you keep mana open and someone tries to wrath the board, you say, you might not want to do that because um, I'm going to turn all your lands into creatures and then your lands are going to be gone. Not my fault. I'm not destroying your lands. You're destroying your lands. That is your fault on that one. But also, of course, you can make yourself an army that you can then pump. Pay two green, green, green. So uh, usually just again, green, green, green. So three mana in total. We just go up plus three, but you can gain trample until end of turn. So a way to pump your entire team, get damage. So basically a repeatable overrun effect for just three mana. Pretty absurd. But now let's move on to tactic number three, bring a friend, because yeah, we've got some activated abilities that are crazy that we can use and abuse, like Jade Mage. Pay two and a green, make a one one sapling. Now again, three mana to make a one one, not very efficient. One mana to do so, again, with our commander's reduction, that is absolutely massive. And of course, again, since we have all those pump effects, a lot of ways to take advantage of that. Cogwork Assembler. This one can be pretty broken, actually. Seven mana, create tokens, copy target artifact. It gains haste, exile the next end step. Again, if you just set down to just one mana to copy any artifact, um, yeah, you can pretty easily, uh, I mean, go infinite with this. So let's say any opponent just has a soul ring in play. Again, create tokens, copy of target artifact. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's yours or not. So all of a sudden, again, if this costs one mana to activate, you make a soul ring, you make another soul ring, you make another soul ring, infinite mana right there. Infinite copies of this, infinite copies of any other artifacts, essentially, to swing out and win with. We've got some other effects in the deck we can take advantage of. Speaking of which, Felden of the Third Path. This kind of works really well in conjunction with it. Two and a red, although it's just going to cost a red most of the time. Again, tap, create tokens, copy target creature card in your graveyard, except it's an artifact, just another type. So again, artifact, there you go. Gain say sacrifice being an extend step. This can be really impactful. Sylvanas Invoker, though. This one can actually be broken. Pay eight mana, but again, if you can reduce that down to one, there's some crazy potential with this. Untap target land, your control becomes an eight-eight elemental with trample and haste. So left turn to land. So you can make your lands into an army that can just really hit hard. But also, and we'll get to some lands here in a little bit, that can basically turn this infinite because yeah, if you get a land that taps for two and only casts one to activate, you can keep on tapping that same land again and again and again, making infinite mana, turning all your lands into creatures, taking your opponents out, doing a lot of crazy things. I guess with your commander's activated ability too, making them infinitely large as well. I guess again, rules lawyers out there. You Yes, technically, there needs to be a number that you choose. It's not infinite, so five trillion, okay? You win. Then we've got Hive Heart Shaman. When it attacks, you may search life for a basic land card that doesn't share your land type with a land you control. So, sure, I mean, sometimes we might not have a mountain or a forest. Cool, go get those. Ramp a little bit. More importantly, though, for this deck, pay five and a green, or again, if you got the reduction, just a green mana, make a 1-1 one, one insect, but you get X counters on it, Rex number of basic land types from a land you control, active on sorcery, so basically you're making three threes most of the time. Hydra Rune Master, speaking of massive creatures, though, a 7-7 seven, seven Hydra, pay X, X, and a green, but again, that can be reduced a lot by our commander, Monstrosity X, becomes monstrous, you get X, 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 green Hydra creature tokens, so... Yeah, make a lot of massive Hydras to take over the game. Or how about 
make a lot of saplings that we can make massive pay two and a green so kind of like jade mage make a one one sapling cool uh usually that's just gonna cost a green to do but also on top of that sacrifice a sapling and saplings get plus plus one to out of turn so we can just swing all of them at our opponents sacrifice a good amount of them and take them out speaking of making a lot of creatures though threefold thunder hulk enters about three counters on it enters the battlefield or attacks create a number of one one gnome artifact creature tokens equal to its power pay two or you know typically going to be one with our commander in play sacrifice artifact get a counter on this so grow this power to essentially grow that amount throughout the game that we are creating and then there's thundering spine back other dinosaurs you control get plus one one pay five in a green which is a lot usually but again with this commander it's just going to be a green most of the time make a three three with trample so all of a sudden you make some three three dinosaurs which are basically four fours for just one man at a time yeah you're going to take over the game in absolutely no time with this kind of a once you're set up properly. But now let's go on to tag number four, lose a friend because you can take your friends out in absolutely no time with cards like Balls Invoker. Eight mana, it deals four damage to each opponent again. Typically, right, that would be an absurd amount of mana to pay. Eight is a ton. But again, with this commander, it's like, oh no, that reduces down to like, oh, probably just one mana most of the time once you've got some pump with your commander. And then all of a sudden you're paying one mana to deal four damage to each opponent. That is 12 damage in total. Again, assuming that you've got three opponents. Cool. They're going to get taken out in absolutely no time. Again, you are in colors that obviously can ramp absurdly well. And we've got Flame Wave Invoker in a very similar way. We've got pay a single red mana once you get the reduction down, essentially. Deal five damage to target players. So yeah, specifically take one player out. Or how about Captivating Crew? You're going to lose some friends by taking their friends. A human pirate that has pay three and a red, but again, typically just a red mana. Gain control target creatures and opponent controls until I have turn. Untap it again, say still have turn. Activate only as a sorcery. Quite funny, quite crazy, quite powerful, and um, yeah, pretty, pretty brutal to say, oh, all your creatures are mine. I'm taking you out with your own creatures for just one mana apiece. Absolutely crazy threat and effect. But moving on, we've got tactic number five, smash it all. And we're going to start smashing things with Caustic Caterpillar, a tiny little cute caterpillar, which again, can get absolutely massive with this kind of a commander. Regardless, pay one in a green, or again, just a green, essentially. Sacrifice, destroy target, artifact, or enchantment. Valkut Invoker can deal a lot of damage to a lot of things. Eight mana, again, is a ton, but again, can reduce it down to just one mana. Deal three damage to any target. So again, take out a lot of creatures, just like Lightning Bolt, Lightning Bolt, Lightning Bolt, Lightning Bolt, Lightning Bolt, or take out your players' faces, players' faces, opponents' faces, or yeah, their Planeswalkers, whatever you need to do. Clay Golem, six Roy D, eight Monstrosity X, where X is the result. So again, typically just going to be a single mana for that. When it becomes monstrous, destroy target permanent. So a nice little effect to just take something out. They've got Leafkin Avenger. It taps for a green for each creature you control with power four or greater, which again, can be an absurd amount. On top of that, again, 7 a red can reduce down just a red mana. Deals damage equal to its power to target player or planeswalker. So again, without any extra pump on this, that's already four. Of course, we've got plenty of ways to pump it. That can be an absurd amount. Then we've got Lord of Shatter Skull Pass. Level it up for, again, just a single red mana with your commander in play. Once it gets a 6 plus, whenever it attacks, it deals 6 damage. Each creature defending player controls basically a repeatable board wipe on a body for your opponent's creatures. Skargan, Hellkite is another great one. Riot enters the battlefield with either a plus one counter or a haste. You're going to want to get that counter on it unless you've got another way to do that. It's got flying. It's a 4 4. Pay three in a red, or again, just a single red mana most of the time with this commander. Two damage divided as you choose among any two targets. One or, one or two targets, I should say. Activate only if it's got a counter on it. So yeah, just paying one to ping things. Yeah, you can do a lot of great things with this. Death Kiss is a great one as well. 5 5. Whenever a creature an opponent controls, attacks one of your opponents, double its power until I'm turned. So great to incentivize your opponents to attack each other, which is very very nice but on top of that xx for a red monstrosity x again you can reduce that down a ton when it goes monstrous go up to x our creature opponent's control that can be a ton just saying yeah you just take all those creatures and swing them elsewhere moving on horde smelter dragon the bane of artifacts for your opponents a 5-5 flyer pay three in a red or again with this commander just a red most of the time Destroy target artifact is going to get plus x plus zero or x the artifact's mana value basically again a great way to pump this and also just eliminate every single your opponent's artifacts on the board and make it so they literally can't play any artifacts at all or it's going to get taken out and then we've got olivia's attendance a six six with menace for six mana it deals the damage create that many blood tokens that can be a lot of additional card selection for you on top of that pay two in a red or again just a red with our commander essentially one damage to any target so yeah this is basically just a blood token generator for you that can ping whatever you need to ping players faces planeswalkers creatures yeah take a lot of things out speaking of which steal hellkite 
pay two, or again, just a single one with our commander in play. Plus one was zero until I turn. So again, true fire breathing then essentially. Pay X mana though, destroy each non land permit with convert mana cost. Expert whose controller is dealt combat damage by seal get this turn. Activate only once each turn. Yeah, you can essentially say that is whatever number I want to be. I just pay a single mana then and take whatever number I want out. So that can be absolutely massive. Finally, Shivan Hellkite. Pay one and a red, one damage to any target. So again, another nice way to essentially say, yeah, I'm just going to pay a single red mana, take out whatever I need to take out. But on the other end of things, let's talk about attack number six. Stick around because we want to protect our own things as well, especially our commander. Thran Power Suit is a great way to do that. Plus plus one for each ord equipment attached to it has ward two. So that ward two is quite nice to protect our commander. And on top of that, that can be a good pump effect as well. And um, yeah, this one's pretty brutal with this commander. Soul of New Phyrexia, a 6-6 six, six with Trample that has pay five. But again, our commander can reduce that down to just basically one mana. Permanence you control gain indestructible until I have turn. Okay, so for a single mana, we can keep protecting our entire board again and again and again. And this can just be absurdly hard to deal with for your opponents. And also, if this is in our graveyard, yeah, you still got to pay that five. But you can also exile this to protect our board one more time. But now let's move on to our next tactic and talk about... The number one card of this deck, in my opinion, the golden pig of this deck, which is Swashbuckler's Whip. Oh my goodness, this spicy. Artifact equipment for one mana, equip one, so very easy to attach to any of our creatures. Equip creature has reach and pay to tap, tap target artifact or creature. More importantly though, and pay eight tap, discover ten. Okay, so this basically, again, this equipment gives that creature that ability, which means that our commander can reduce that activated cost. So essentially, again, sure, yeah, pay one mana, tap, you know, tap target effect creature, that's nice. More importantly, though, again, yeah, if we can reduce that eight down to just one mana, pay one tap, discover ten? Again, which is basically Cascade, essentially, in a way. And yeah, hey, just get a lot of free value off the top of your library, do some pretty crazy things. Absolutely absurd. And uh, just think about this in combination with, you know, maybe something that can make one of our lands anyway creatures. There's a lot of crazy potential with something like this, and it's just a crazy good card regardless. Swashbuckler's Whip, definitely worth the title of the Golden Pig. But of course, we've got other ways to generate some card advantage and selection, so let's move on to our next tactic, Dig Down. Seeker of Sunlight is a great one. Low to the ground creature has paid two and a green. Again, maybe only just a green with our commander in play. It explores, activate on the sorcery. Being able to just explore again and again and again for a single green mana is crazy. Getting a lot of lands in our hand, getting cards on the top of our library, getting more counters on this. What's lots of love? Also, we've got another low to the ground creature with Vindictive Flame Stoker, a 1 2 Phyrexian Wizard. Whenever you cast a non creature spell, get an oil counter on it. Nice. More importantly, though, Pay six and a red, discard your hand, then draw four cards. Cost one less to activate for each oil counter on it. Um, yeah, that's uh, essentially just going to cost, well, again, a red mana thanks to, well, that oil counter, or the oil counters, and also our commander's reduction. Then we've got Magus of the Wheel. Pay single red mana, because, again, our commander. Tap, sacrifice it, everybody wheels. Discard your hand, then draw seven cards. Merch of the Veil, a great repeatable source of card selection. Pay two and a red, or again, just a single red with our commander in play, and a little bit of pump. Discard a card, draw a card. Fantastic repeatable rummaging effect. You can also rummage by actually just using the instant version of this card as well, Haggle. Then we've got Vivian's Grizzly. Three and a green, or again, just typically a green mana. Look at the top card of your library, it's a creature or planeswalker. You may reveal it in your hand. If you don't, you may put it on the bottom of your library. Um, yeah, there you go. You're going to be able to get a lot of creatures off the top of the library into your hand for, again, just a single green mana most of the time. Crazy card advantage. Yeast on the Water Bard can get them right on the play. Pay two and a green and tap, or again, just a single green mana most of the time with this commander. Put a verse counter on this, search your life for a creature card with mana value equal to the number of verse counters on it, put on the battlefield, then shuffle. So again, it's getting larger and larger creatures every single time for the situation that you're in. Harmonize, pay four mana, draw three cards. It's very simple. Five mana, though, Shamanic Revelation, draw a card for each creature you control, which can be an absurd amount, obviously. And also, gain four life for each creature control of power four or greater. That can be basically all of them at a certain point. Again, our commander can pump them to that amount if we need to. And Collective Unconscious, six mana, still a great card. Draw a card for each creature you control. Again, can be an absurd amount, can really help you keep things going. Next up, though, let's talk about our tactic, Go Big, because we've got some creatures that can help us get a lot of mana. First up, Frontier Guide. Pay three and a green and tap, or again, typically just a green mana with this commander. Go get a basic out of your library, put it on the battlefield, tap, then shuffle. A repeatable ramping growth, essentially, for just a single mana every single turn. What's not to love about that? Soul Bright Flamekin, though. A spicy ability. 
two mana, but again, it's just going to be one with this commander in play. Target creature gains trample until end of turn. For the third time this ability is resolved this turn, you may add red, 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 red. I think I said that right. Eight mana and sold to your mana pool. So basically, you're paying three mana now, thanks to your commander, to add eight. Absurd. Burnish heart, really fun. Pay three, sacrifice to go get two basics into play. Tapped. Essentially, you're just going to pay you know one mana most of the time for this. Spell Ice Shaper again, another repeatable source of ramp for us. Three mana in total, but again, it's just going to be basically probably one mana. Tap, make a color snow artifact token named Icy Math that can tap for one mana color. Basically, pay one mana, make a mana rock. Pay one mana, make a mana rock, and also a crazy good ability too that you can reduce down to just red and green. Tap, look at top four cards your library, cast one of them for free. Yeah, that can be a great one to use and abuse. Realm Seekers, though, is a crazy good one as well. It just battlefield X counters on every X the number of cards in all players' hands. So this can be quite massive. On top of that, pay two and a green, or again, typically just a green mana. Move a counter from it. Go get a basic land. Sorry, sorry. Go get any land, not just basic. Any land out of your library right into your hand. So this can be crazy good. It's not going to ramp you, but it can help you ensure that you hit your land drops. Absolutely nice. But of course, we also have some typical ramp as well. So let's move on to our next tactic. Ramp it up. First up, there's Wayfarer's Bob. We'll pay two taps, sacrifice, get a base land into play. Tap, ramp and growth does that as well. Obviously, the OG ramp. Two mana, go get a base, gonna play tap. Edge of Bob does the exact same thing if we got four fewer lands. Later in the game, though, we can cycle it away by sacrificing a land to get something better. Then there's Cultivate. Go get two basics. One goes into play tap. One goes into our hand. Grow from the Ashes. If you kick it, you get two basics into play untapped that you can utilize right away. If not, just one. Harrow, sacrifice one land. Go get two basics into play untapped to utilize them right away. And Search for tomorrow, another great turn one play. Spend two for a single green mana. Get a basic into play untapped. But now that we've talked about every single anomaly card in this deck, let's talk about a couple of great lands that I want to highlight with the next tactic. Great lands! First up, Gruel Turf enters the battlefield tap, bounces a land back to our hand, and also can tap for two mana, can tap for red green. And again, like I mentioned earlier with that one card, the Invoker, hey, um, yeah, if you're set up properly, this can be infinite mana quite easily. So we're also going to be running Guildless Commons. Basically, the exact same thing, but this one just taps for Colors Colors, which is fine. Again, still goes infinite with that too. Then we've got Kessig Wolf Run, a great card in this deck as well. Tap for Colors, pay X green, red, sorry, red, green, whatever it is. Tap dark creature gets plus X plus zero and gains trample till I have turn. So yeah, a way to essentially say, hey, let's just hypercharge this commander, get its power up there, or just, yeah, get damage through when we need to. But now this episode is coming to a close. It's time for me to hear from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts are on this deck. Yeah, this commander is crazy powerful, crazy fun. And again, can be built on a crazy low budget. So if you are interested in this commander, make sure you check out that deck list link in the description below. And of course, as always, thanks again and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support.